Tim's rolling. Here comes the. Uh, try to ask something different. It's going to be hard. <laughs> try, you know, I feel bad for you, folks. All right. No. Okay. All right. Now, after all these years, and you haven't heard this before, you can finally tell us who has the real talent out of you two. <laughs> <laughs> who is it? Come on. The Fessa. real what? The real talent. Oh dear. The real oh. talent. We both have a separate talents. She has a wonderful talent, and I have a talent. It's the, the combining that, of the talents, that's the combining a of the chemistry. Question. I know. I just wanted to get, get you the chemistry. You know, people talk about chemistry and they talk about timing. Uh, why do Imogene? Let me ask you. Why do people keep coming back to see uh, Sid and Imogene together again? I mean, the response has been tremendous. Why is? What brings them back in your mind? Well, I, I think we do a lot of comedy that, uh, that on human behavior. And I think they, they see themselves in some of the things that we do. They, they, and and uh, I, th I think it's that. Oh, you work very well. It speaks to them also. It, it does, uh, it also, I think uh, it reminds them of the time, because this was a family show, you know, and uh, they remember sitting with their parents and with their, or with their children, whatever and watching the show, and it gives them a sense of, of well-being, because in those, in those days, in the, in the 50s, America was, uh, was really America. I mean, it's, uh, now it's like, uh, with all the scandals that are going on with the SNLs, and with the HUD, and with the, this, and with, you know, nobody, they're starting to lose faith in America, and that's, that's wrong. You know, that's the one thing that I find very disturbing in, uh, in the country today, is the lack of education, the lack of... Uh, of commitment, even by our uh, uh, so-called uh, lawmakers, you know, mm -hmm. at the Congress, because uh, if they, if, 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 you know, this SNL thing has really uh, caught my attention for a long time ago, and I never knew why they didn't approach, they didn't approach this thing, because it, you know, it only got bigger and bigger and bigger, and you can't sweep it under the rug anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, it's something that's gonna, you have to face. And we used to face things in those days, and uh, if you, uh, Especially in school, if you, uh, my kids brought home a report card, I would get upset right. if the report card wasn't right, you know? So, uh, and today, I don't, parents don't take the, the, uh, the time with their children, or they, they, they can't afford to take the time. So much pressure is built on them. And there's so many different uh, things that you're, you're they, they get your attention with this for one week or two days, and they get your attention over here. And so they direct you, which you, you know, what to look at, what to do, what to do, what to mm -hmm. do. You know, one week it's the war, one week it's this, one week it's Russia, one week it's Germany, one week it's the SNLs, the next week. And it's all forgotten. Nothing is done. Your attention is brought to it. What do I get on this? <laughs> <laughs> the main thing is uh, they were much quieter, not quieter times, but they were more solid times. People felt more at ease with themselves and with, with, with each other. Mm. Well, let, me, let me ask you, uh, how do you think audience reaction in 1990 compares to 40 years ago when you were doing the sketches live on TV? How, when people come to see you, how does the audience reaction differ? Well, um, being at Michael's Pub and doing more or less the same kind of material now, I don't see any difference. It's um, the same to me. I don't know how. No, it's the same because when when they watched it, as you say, it was live, mm -hmm. and that's a dimension I think that we've lost. You know, I think uh, that television has lost the dimension of of live because it was immediate. If you made a mistake, you saw it. You mm -hmm. know, it wasn't uh, chopped out or oh, let's do it again. And uh, they instead of just as they watch as you watch television today, you observe television. In those days, they were. They not only watched, they were, they were, it's like watching a football game. If you, you know, if you watch a football game on tape, you know, you say, well, that's good, but this, but if you really watch it when it's live, you say, there's, you know, there's only three things they can do with the ball. They can kick it, run with it, and throw it. Right. But will he drop it? Will he fumble? Will he dip? Will he rub it? Will this? Will he rub it? And that's what was in, in live. The element of live in those days was, will a piece of scenery fall down? Will somebody forget their line? Will uh, a cue not But it never thing? happened. I'm saying, but there was the chance of it. Oh, oh it happened chance. a couple yeah. of times. Why did not it never happen? Scenery, not, not well, not the scenery. Well, not the scenery, but I'm in costumes. I had to change <laughs> for quite a few times. I remember the Golden Age boot story you told yeah, me last right. time. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's it, you know. One, one of the times. But, but that was so, it was remarkable that there were so few accidents on the show. Yeah. That, you know, spoke well for the staff and... Oh, sure. Okay. I mean, it was amazing how they... You know, they would take in a take a show in, and that, well, why that take, before they take a show in, they had to take another show out. Mm -hmm. So they used to be there for 48 to 72 hours sometimes, uh, just 
and without sleep and without and you hate all these marks and, and they were I mean, wonderful. It, it was like having a, a cheering team behind you, you know. That they, they wanted the show to be good. The 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 stage hands, the crew, they wanted the show to be good as as much as the producer or the actor or the network or anyone else. So there was a great kind of an enthusiasm. Mm. A lot of energy. It was went. a lot of pride, you know, everybody took pride. Even the cameraman, you know, when they said, well, I, well, I do the uh, you know, the show, show, shows, yeah, you know. Yeah. So that was, uh, that was I mean, a big... That, people used to set their, their, Saturday, their nights by it. They wouldn't go out. They wanted to see your show. You well, know? I got a lot of... Uh, lot I'm of, parents. A lot of, a lot of uh, people would come over and tell me, you know how much money you saved me? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have to take my girl out We wouldn't, when, uh, when they're married with right. children now. I put my kid through college on you. <laughs> <laughs> so you save a lot of money on those nights. Now, in the early days of live TV, many, <coughs> many subject matters were taboo. I mean, nowadays, uh, there's so much that everybody's saying, uh, everything, everything's, everything can go. Um, how much of a challenge was it coming up with fresh material every week? Well, to me, you want to? No, I, I was thinking that, that there, wasn't, that, uh, there wasn't a lot of problems coming up with fresh material. It was, it was kind of fun. Well, it wasn't a problem, but it was a problem. But the, the problem was that the, we used to, I was a people watcher, and right. all the writers were people watchers, and we did things from the human condition, you know? That's where we got our ideas. We didn't get off the wall stuff, or it didn't have to be out of this world, or this or that, you know? Once in a while, we'd do a couple of Martians, or we'd do a couple of cats talking we were to each other. Astronauts, too, at one point. Right. <laughs> and, uh, but it was things that happened to people every day. Uh, that's, that's where we got our material. You know, when you, when you went to see a movie, we would do a satire of the movie. Or if we did uh, a home sketch, it would be a satire of what, what goes on at the home. Mm -hmm. And if you went to a restaurant, uh, all the different things that can happen to you in a restaurant. You could do the, the, the marital sketches right now. The only, the only thing we, uh, and we didn't have to cope with it at all, but in those days, uh, husband and wife couldn't be in the same bed. Had to be twin beds and there was a little table between. But we were usually arguing, or oh, else, yeah. or couldn't sleep, or something. So it had nothing. To, it didn't interfere with the writing of the sketch. It was right. just that, that little things like that. Now, of course, you. But not not only that, I think the censorship was good for us. I really do. I mean, uh, the fact that we couldn't get by on on on, this, on the uh, double entendre, all the uh, actual saying of the words, mm -hmm. uh, forced us to be creative. Forced us to be. Uh, uh, inventive, you know, and I think that was a. Uh, I think it was, did us a lot of, an awful lot of good. Yeah, it was, it was I think what they're doing sometimes, in some cases now, there is no discipline whatsoever, and they just say anything you want. And that to me is a is a lack of. It starts to be a crutch, mm -hmm. and when it starts to be a crutch, then uh, you don't know if it's funny or not. And it also, the laugh track, that to me is. I, I keep on saying it all the time. It's such a false, you know. Uh, and a lot of people who are on these uh, sitcoms and television where they have the laugh track, and they go out and make a personal appearance, and they use the same material or use some part of it, and they go and they deliver the line, and nothing happens because, and it's, they're, they're taken back. They said, gee, there was a big laugh there before. Well, that was people laughing from 1920. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. They just went into the vault and got the uh, right. tapes. Um, now, Imogene, you worked with Mel Brooks, you worked with Carl Reiner, you worked with Sid Caesar, you worked with Harry Morris, uh, and Lucille. A lot of men and a couple of women in there. Now, let me, in the, now let's talk about in the, in the 50s here. Uh, what was it like to get your two cents in? Was it a chauvinistic uh, atmosphere to be in, or how was it? I guess it was, but I didn't, I don't think I knew the word chauvinistic right. then. We had a, a, a lady writer, Lucille Callan, and I think Lucille suffered more than I because she was allergic to cigar smoke. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to tell you, they all smoked the biggest cigars you've ever seen. My grandfather and father smoked cigars constantly. So it was like being home. But for Lucille, she turned quite green <laughs> and leave the room many times. And I guess it never occurred to any of the body to stop no, smoking no, a cigar. There was no such a thing as uh, you know being chauvinistic. It was, uh, it was just uh, that was the way it was. You know, I mean, we didn't really, you know, not that we got and, and put the women down because mm -hmm. we didn't. It was always I was the was the one who was uh, was you know was the was the loser and never won the fights. You know, she was the winner. 
but but I guess there was some chauvinism, yeah. I would say. I'd have to get with Lucille and have a nice long talk <laughs> and find out how she felt. Yeah. With, um, who, <laughs> who or what did you use as a barometer to, so you know if a sketch or a skit was working? How did you know? We didn't. We really didn't. We just went on our own. Did, a couple of times we did sketch in front of the uh, gypsies, the dance singers and dancers in the show. Don't you remember? Yeah, but two we, we sketches didn't know and they didn't like laugh, that. so they were thrown off. Once and they were while. right. Oh yeah, there were a couple of times better. we had some uh, sketches that were thrown out. But uh, we really actually did the majority of the material. You know, we didn't know if it was going to work or not. You take a chance. Like we did the the four Englishmen. We didn't know if that was going to work or not. You know. And uh, that's where we just sat on the couch and didn't talk for about 30 seconds. That's a long time not to talk in television. And uh, it worked. And we did, did some more. We did uh, the four Englishmen here, the four Englishmen there. And uh, we took a chance. You know, you, in those days you did take a chance because there were no, you didn't have a, a laugh track to back you up. And, well, the, uh, the, first, the first satire we did on a movie, uh, Lucille Callan wrote. Right. And uh, Max would always say on Monday, did anybody write anything? And it would cause gales of laughter. And this time, Bruce Hill said, I did. And so she, wrote, she read her sketch, which was a satire on Place in the Sun. And uh, Max said, I, I think it's a little too sophisticated. He, he never played down to an audience. But that was the only time I've ever heard him use that word concerning an audience. And uh, Lucille said, well, it has such a nice part for coca. And Sid said, then why don't we do it? So we did it, and we did the run through of the show for the crew and everything. Not one laugh. And my agent, who came to see the show, said, oh, the show looks so good this week. It took just You're not doing that sketch about that movie, are you? And I said, mm-hmm, yep, yes, we are. And we were very nervous going on. Well, how many sketches, satire sketches, or oh. movies were done after that? Literally, uh, I would say close to 100. Really? Yeah. Really and, but out. Lucille wrote the first one, which was kind of brilliant, all by herself, and showed great courage, I think. <laughs> Talking about things that, that take off, I mean, you have such a great, you know, it's overused chemistry. You hear it all the time, but you have a great timing on stage together. How would you describe your on and off stage relationship? I mean, uh, we you weren't really socially. We negative. don't do much socially, do we? No. We never go out. No. We never go out. You never say to me, I don't do anything. Don't never talk here. to me. You never yeah. say <laughs> the ladies have Actually, I think it's better because <laughs> what it is, I mean, I don't, uh, I don't get into her private life and she doesn't get into my private life. And it's better because uh, I don't want to be involved in her, and I don't think she should be involved with, with you know, my troubles or her troubles, you know. And uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful working, professional working relationship. And uh, that's the way I think it should be. I mean, I don't know. It just happened to work out that way. And I, mean, you can I remember we went, to a, we went to the inauguration of Nick, uh, with the Eisenhower. And Nixon oh, boy, the, and we sat on... Uh, <laughs> we sat there for eight hours. <laughs> and had, couldn't think of anything to say to each other. We sat there for eight hours waiting, you know, for Until to Mr. On. Nixon came. When Nixon, when Nixon came, he was just elected vice president. And he said, where's my coat? <laughs> he, <laughs> he was mad. I said, and the only thing I said to him was, do you ever see a sore loser? <laughs> right. No, a sore winner. I'm sorry. Right, yeah, he was, yeah. It was a sore winner. Um, so it's interesting. So it just it just happens to click on stage. Yes. Uh, your your there's acquaintances and friends, but not really socially. There's together. really no reason for it at all. It's, it's weird, isn't it? Come well, to think of it. Well, you're talented. <laughs> <laughs> not really. No, I mean, there's a lot there is something weird about. It. No, no, if, if, if the, it's if best not to think about it. I think. Maybe. Yeah, but it's oh, not. I never stop to think about it. Maybe it's maybe what she's saying, if it's not broken, don't try to fix it. I mean, it's done right. so well exactly. I mean, over the years. Um, when you see humor today, and, and you know, we talk about blue comedians, and a lot of comedians are using tough stuff. I yeah. mean, a couple of prime examples, uh, very well-known comedians. What do you feel like when you see that? I mean, you people did it out of creativity, and you see people saying every other word is dirty or this or that. What do you feel like when you see that uh, from these people? I don't see it too much, to tell you the truth. I've, I've never seen the gentleman you're probably thinking about, I can't even think of his name at the moment, no, no disrespect. Right. But I don't see that much. Uh, and occasionally, when I, when I do see it on HBO or something, 
I think it's kind of unnecessary, and it, it, now it's getting a little monotonous. I wish they'd make up new dirty words. There mm. must be a lot. My mother could have helped them in that department. <laughs> well, I think it's uh, it's demeaning to the not only to the language, but it's demeaning to the culture. And I think, see, once you say, it's like when in Gone with the Wind, when they said, "Frankly, Charlotte, I don't give a damn." Right. That was the opening of the gates. Right. That was it. But that made that line off the good. Of though. course, I say so. But no, I mean, terrible if, if they're thing doing that. a play. If you're doing a play and, you, and it's about the, the Marine Corps or the, or the Army or the service and a bunch of men together, and they use, hey, you want to pass the guard? If, if they, you know, if they says, you know, they're having a meal and, you, and one soldier says to another, soldier, hey, you want to pass the guard down, butter? Right. It sounds out of place. Yeah. You know, it, you use the real language because it's legitimate. It's supposed to be there. That. That's it. It makes it makes it uh, makes it real. But to use it just out of uh, good evening, right, mothers. Right. right. You know? Yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, that's, uh, that's hello. Where do you go from there? Right. I mean, uh, it, when you use the language, it's supposed to be a, uh, an, an exclamation point or something. It's like a close-up. It comes in. You, you want to you hear something? This is what I'm talking about. And you make it with the explanation. But to just uh, haphazardly just throw it around, it demeans the culture. And that's, it's like you see kids today using it in the street yeah. and using it uh, in, in, in language, in conversation with, uh, with, with women. And, you know, I, it's like... It's, uh, I don't, uh, I really don't, uh, I don't like it. Let me ask you a question then. Where have all the writers gone? A tough tune, but uh, where have all the writers gone? I mean, you, you people survived on good writing and good acting. We were made by good writing, and we, uh, and we, we were very fortunate in having really the best, and I mean it, actually the best. And uh, to such a high standard that uh, I really don't know. There's some good writers around, there really are, but I don't think they ever get together. <laughs> You know, we used to. But I mean, there were good writers around. I mean, I see some stuff on television. It's very, very funny. Very mm. good. Speaking of good writers and, and good scenes, uh, just give me, how was the movie house sketch born? Where did that come from? I mean, it's a classic now uh, with the uh, man that just goes to see a movie and what happens there. How did, where did that come from? It just happened. I mean, I thought about. Uh, I said, the guy goes in and uh, there's an argument. I mean, it's, it's like the innocent bystander. We always did a thing about how he used to play the part of the innocent yeah. bystander. He would play it he if we had a wedding. He was the one beaten up. He was always the one that got beaten up because he was small, you know, and right. we, could, we could throw him around. But uh, it was always the, the poor guy in the middle, you know, and, no, and he, was, he didn't mean anything. He didn't, you know. Remember the wedding? We did a sketch about a wedding. No, the bride goes first. No, the groom goes first. <laughs> Remember that? No. And uh, he, was in, he was the director telling us how the rehearsal for the wedding should go. And he says, well, the groom, I said, the groom did not go first, and we pick him up. No, the groom, and she would grab him, the groom, now the bride goes first. So it was there, and the poor guy in the middle, who didn't, it was means all the well, all the best, it gets, you know, it's, for some reason, it's funny. And uh, we put that into uh, just going, a uh, guy just going into a movie house. What are you, some of your favorite, uh favorite sketches or skits over the years that you have personal favorites. You've done so many, you've done thousands. What, favorite one? Yeah, favorite ones that really made thought you thought were funny. I don't know if it's funny because I I, I was doing it legitimately. I mean I was <laughs> I go back to what Lucille Callan wrote. That was my favorite movie sketch because it just seemed so perfect. It was such it was such good satire which isn't easy to write. I think that was a favorite that and uh, Gee, I'm sure that any other number, like, that's all I can think of at right. the moment. Well, there have been so many that uh, I really, I don't have any favorite. I mean, it's just that... Uh, the car, the marital one, where the car yeah, is wrecked. Yeah, with, with the car, but there's been an awful lot of them. And it's, it's unfair to, to put one against the other. And because the clock, all. the clock thing, there was a thing, the Swiss clock breaking down, you know. It's the big clock of the village. And the four of us were all doing this kind of, you know, little the figures. On top of the, uh, the clock. And it goes crazy. The clock just goes crazy. And so do the figures do all the wrong things. That was good, too. Yeah. People can still catch that on Ha, right? They're running a lot of reruns. Well, it's uh, 65 little shows yeah. on Ha. Yeah, so people can still catch that, which is yeah. great, because a lot of people keep asking, when can I see it? And then I can see it there. And can obviously see you with uh, Michaels in another month or so. Yes, we'll be there for uh, to the end of July. What will the um, Sid Caesar Imaging Coca legacy be? You think was when we go into the mid '90s? So what do you think people are going to think about? 
know. <laughs> I hope it's good. <laughs> what, what does that mean, the legacy? It's something you leave behind. Right. Or what people think about, yeah. But you'll be gone. Well, by the mid-90s, perhaps. Who knows? You don't know. <laughs> we'll be back together again. But <laughs> I, don't, I, I imagine we'll be mentioned in books on comedy. I hope That's so. the only thing I can think of. Yeah, well, you should be mentioning everything on how to perform comedy because you've been entertaining us for so many years and we appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank oh, you. Pleasure. Thank you very much.